Hey friends, welcome back. It is uh, good to uh, get back together with you and continue our study in the book of Galatians. If you remember last week, we started in Galatians chapter 5 and we read verses uh, 1 through 15. And our time was focused really on verse 2 where uh, the Apostle Paul is writing to the church at Galatia and he starts out with these three simple words, mark my words. He's really trying to get their attention to remind them of the freedom that they have in Christ, to talk to them about the significance of what they believed in and what they adhere, adhered to. Uh, we also talked about them being sons and daughters or heirs uh, to a great uh, fortune in the uh, fact of their belief in Christ. And he wanted to encourage them not to fall back into uh, the responsibilities of the law or the works of the law. And so we find ourselves today, we're going to pick up and finish in chapter 5, verses 16 through uh, verse 26, right before we uh, go into chapter 6 next week. And it is inclusive of the very familiar fruits of the Spirit. Matter of fact, in verse 16, the Apostle Paul says, So I say you should live by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the sinful nature. Basically, he's saying live by the Spirit, um, so that you're not worried about the works uh, that are needed, that you're not worried about the law that has to be adhered to. And he says, because the fruits of the Spirit. And then we kind of go back to those days of our childhood when we were taught the songs that reminded us of these nine uh, things that were the fruit of the Spirit. And and we remember the, the uh, Bible lessons that were taught or the little uh, art projects that were done. It says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patient, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Verse 24, it says, those who belong to Jesus Christ have crucified their sinful nature with its passions and desires. And so therefore, since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking or envying one another. See, the contrast between works and the fruits are very important. I want you to think of a machine in a factory. Uh, that machine in the factory, it works and it turns out a product. I've shared with you a number of times my grandfather worked in a bread factory and he was on the assembly line at the end after the bread would come out and it had already been cut. And his responsibility was to pull it off the conveyor belts and prepare it for the cooling station before it was packed into the bags for shipment. And the whole part of the machine is to turn out a product, but it could never manufacture fruit. For fruit must grow where? Out of life or on a tree or on a vine. And in the case of the believer, it is the life of the Spirit, as we read there in Galatians 5.25 that produces the fruits of the Spirit. When you think of works, you think of something that has got to be done out of effort or out of labor or out of strain or toil or just sheer gut work. When you think of fruit, you think of something that's beautiful or quiet or the unfolding of life. You can't wait to see uh, the fruit of your labor, so to speak, when you're doing a garden and you're planting things and you're waiting for that first tomato to come off the vine. See, the flesh produces dead works, but the Spirit produces living fruit. And this fruit has in it the seed for still more fruit to be begotten. See, it's interesting when he lays out the, the nine things there as the fruit of the Spirit. It is, it's love is what it starts out with. And love begats more love. Joy helps produce more joy. And Jesus is concerned that we produce fruit, more fruit, that we produce abundance in fruit, even as it was recorded in John's Gospel in John chapter 15, because this is the way in which we glorify Him by producing fruit. The old nature cannot produce fruit. Only the new nature can do that. The, characteristic, the characteristics that I believe that God wants in our lives are seen in the ninefold fruit of the Spirit. Paul begins with love because of all the other fruit that is really is an outgrowth of love. When we compare these eight qualities with the characteristics of love that are given by Paul when he talks to the church at Corinth, you have to go back to 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 13, and he talks about love in this fashion that says there in verse 4, and you've probably heard this in wedding settings, it says love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it's not rude, it's not self-seeking, it's not easily angered, it keeps no records of wrong, love does not delight in evil but rejoices in the truth, it always protects, always trusts, always hopes, 
Always persevere. Love never fails. The three words there to kick off verse 8. And then we get over to our text in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22, where it says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love. And out of that is joy and peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. The word for love in both of these texts that Paul's using is agape, the Greek word, which means a divine love or an unconditional love. And it's a love that never fails. This is the divine love is God's gift to us. Paul shares about it in the book of Romans, and it's a love that is to be cultivated and prayed that it will increase and that it will continue forth. It is what we are to do. For when a person lives in a sphere of love, then he or she will experience joy, that inward peace and that sufficiency that's not affected by outward circumstances, that's not affected by anything else. There is, if you will, a holy optimism. It keeps us going in spite of difficulties. Love and joy together produce peace. And the peace of God is what, what, pathos, what, is what passes all understanding. So this coming Sunday when we read these things, we're going to see that the first three qualities express a Godward aspect of the Christian life. The next three things in the nine characters or the fruits of the Spirit expresses a manward aspect of the Christian life and the long-suffering. And then the final three qualities are selfward as we look at ourselves as far as meekness and power and authority and power under control and temperance. What is the fruit of the Spirit to you? when you heard it for the first time, when you read it for the first time, and when you realize that when Christ dwells within us, it's the fruit of the Spirit that produces that love, that joy, that peace. It produces a kindness, a goodness, and a faithfulness in us, a gentleness, and a self-control. And against such things there is no law. There is no law. So back at verse 2 in chapter 5 when he says, Mark my words. Mark my words. This is what you want to adhere to. This is what you want to be remindful of. This is why Paul fights back at this moment with the Galatian church. So friends, I invite you to come to the campus this coming Sunday here at Union Avenue Baptist Church, 2181 Union Avenue in the heart of Midtown Memphis. I look forward to you gathering with us on the campus for our Bible study hour. Um, in which is presented in many different ways, in many different fashions across uh, generations. We have a gathering for senior adult uh, men and women. We have a gathering for married couples. We have a gathering for our children and for our youth and teenagers. We have offerings both in Mandarin and in English uh, for you to be a part of here on the campus on Sunday mornings and then the worship hour as we come together. And we'll focus on this closing verses in Galatians chapter 5 as we look at an often taught section, but as we look at the significance of it when we read about the fruits of the Spirit. So what I, I would ask you today as we conclude, what is it that defines your life? What is it in your life that you can look at and say, these are the fruits of the Spirit that are resident within me, and I know that to the best of my ability, I try to present them each and every day in the things that I do. So thank you for taking the time to be a part of this uh, time together this during this moment uh, in Galatians chapter 5. I look forward to seeing you this coming Sunday on the campus at Union Avenue Baptist Church. Would you join with me as we pray? Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you. We thank you. Lord, we look forward with great anticipation of what is in store for us in the days and weeks ahead. Lord, there are many things that are trying and difficult, but Lord, we know that with you all things are possible, and we know that there is uh, a complete understanding and a complete awareness of what is a fruit of the Spirit and what is being uh, presented to each and every one of us. And so, Lord, we thank you for that love, that joy, that peace, for that kindness, that faithfulness, the gentleness, and the self-control. Lord, just continue to remind us to be ever-present in your will for our lives. Guide us, lead us, and direct us, Lord. Bring us together this coming Sunday for an incredible time of worship that we would be able to honor you, that we'd be able to glorify you, and that we'd be able to celebrate you. And Lord, that we could do all of it through learning your word, through reading your word, and through ultimately leaving this place to apply your word. So, Lord, we love you. Lord, we thank you. For it's in your precious holy name we do pray. And amen.